fact, they are not only killing Africans, I mean uh, Nigerians, they are also killing other Africans. And I'm sure it is all the African nations that came together to help in fighting this apartheid. How will they feel if other countries now start killing their nationals living in other African countries? Our government should move immediately, and I say immediately. Immediately because we cannot afford to wait and see our brothers and sisters being slaughtered like rams for no cause of theirs. These are men and women that have decided to go outside the shores of our country to do genuine business. For whatever reason, for whatever purpose, if you don't like their faith, you have the right to probably ask them genuinely through a clear method that, look, you don't want them in your country. But my concern, Mr. Speaker, is that what are the security agents, what are the government in South Africa doing? Knowing fully well that if it is happening in another place, they will be able to protect the citizens. Have they allowed their citizens to slaughter other African citizens without taking any action? I mean, these are fundamental issues that we need to look at. And I think as a government, we must wake up immediately to our responsibility. If we don't, I think we will be failing in our own responsibility. The House has called on President Goodluck Jonathan to recall the Nigerian ambassador to South Africa. The House also urged the South African President, Jacob Zuma, to immediately commence an investigation into the matter so as to resolve the matter once and for all. Now, I also had a chat with the Chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Honorable Nena Elendu KJ. She shared her thoughts on the reports of attacks on African nationals living in South Africa. It's a very unfortunate incident, but let me say that, you know, it's, it's not a Nigerian thing, and that's the perspective that I'd like to come from. I'm very tragic. South Africa has been absolutely notorious for their xenophobic tendencies, and this almost cost them um, the slot in, at, the, um, at hosting the World Cup. It was something that came up. But... Um, what makes this even more different is that the South African authorities have gone out of their way to point out that it's not xenophobia, that it is what they call Afrophobia, and that it is ideological. So basically, um, it is some kind of tacit um, endorsement of what they're doing. Because if you are dividing the blacks from the whites and making the point that you're exempting some people from these attacks, then it means that you're looking to certain people for approval and you don't care the reaction of certain people. Now, of course, again, um, the Zulu king had said what he said, had made an attempt at retracting it, but Edward Zuma, the president's son, echoed more or less what the Zulu king said. And um, the fact that it was the police chief that came out and made the clarification about xenophobia and Afrophobia, I think is also instructive. And of course, there's also been reports that um, while the police stand around and are invited there, the police is actually not engaging the people. No arrests have been made, no gunshots have been fired, and they have also appealed that there be no reprisal attacks. So put all that together, and of course the fact that they say it's ideological is in there, it's in, well, my opinion, a way of justifying what it is that is going on. So um, I think that Africa needs to take a, a pretty determined stance on what to do with South Africa moving forward as far as Afrophobia is concerned. Okay, now I would like to ask, do you think the African community, the, the African leaders of, the, of African countries are doing enough to address this issue? Luckily for us, we have a platform wherein African leaders can meet, and that's the African Union. And luckily for us, we have the mid-term African Union meeting between the 4th to the 6th of June. Now, I am of the opinion, and of course, incidentally, it is in Durban, as well, where these attacks are going on. Now, I think that one thing that the African leadership can do to sound um, a, a very serious warning is first and foremost to move that meeting to Addis Ababa. Because um, if the government is giving tacit support 
to that and they're not coming out. Well, I know that the president has come out to condemn it, but in condemning it, he's calling it criminality, not xenophobia. And I think that that point needs to be made. There needs to be clarification. And I think that Africa must sound very, very loudly the fact that you cannot hold the meeting in a place where you, they clearly do not want Africans, in a, place that, in a place that is clearly not hospitable to Africans. It's now a country that preaches hate, tacitly, overtly, covertly, whatever, um, has repeated cases of xenophobia, should not be allowed to house those things. I think Africa really needs to collectively, as a people, come together and look at this issue of um, hatred for Africa very critically. You cannot want to be a leader on the continent and clearly hate the people who are from that continent. You oversight the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, what can you tell us as regards what the ministry is doing uh, to address some of the concerns of Nigerians in South Africa? There are three Nigerians who have been um, hurt, who are presently hospitalized in South Africa. And I know that what the ambassador has done, and I've been in close contact with him, is um, he's collated, he's going around and they're collating the loss that has, Nigerians have suffered. Luckily for us, we have the South Af Nigerian South African Binational Commission meeting coming up very soon. Um, now, of course, friendly nations always sit down in Georgia. It was Churchill, I know, who said Georgia is better than World War. And I know we're going to have that conversation. But one thing that we intend to present to the South Africans is the loss that has been cured by Nigeria. We, we will present it at the next Binational Commission meeting and we'll insist that they comply with that. <music> Our hearts are with these people in these very trying times as we look forward to an end to this issue. Remember, you can write to us through any of the addresses on the screen and share your thoughts with us. We look forward to your reactions to these developments in the parliament. Now, the next few weeks promise to be very insightful as the 7th Legislative Assembly slowly completes its journey in the National Assembly. We promise to bring you every detail every step of the way. Till next week, Lanre Lassese, take care.